and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. And I'm Ron. And I'm ready for some figgy pudding. <laughs> I don't know what that is. How about sticky toffee pudding? Okay, that's Jean Marie. Uh, collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are talking about household safety. And when I think of household safety, I tend to think about very young people or, you know, babies and um, actually baby proofing something. I've heard of that. And then (laughs) um, in one's home, as well as older adults and well, not really like adult proofing, um, Uh, but uh, or senior proofing. But, you know, you get the idea. Well, no matter what the age range happens to be in your household, there are always things that we can do to make our homes a safer place to live. And nowadays, Uh, work, and learn as well. Universal and inclusive designs can make our homes safer and more functional for everyone. Uh, We're we're going to talk about a a few modifications which may actually make your home safer. And here's a tip. You may even be able to get assistance and or funding for your home safety upgrades and improvements through some of your local social and senior programs, nonprofit organizations such as Habitat for Humanity or the International Red Cross and Crescent, maybe your local police and fire department, or even your utility companies and such. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm wondering if, the, if uh, not the Red Cross, um, Salvation Army, I wonder if they do anything. But I, I know our local gas company will come out and, and inspect your dryer and furnace. And actually, um, there's programs here in Illinois, they will actually supply insulation We'll we'll probably talk about that in the future. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Let's talk about, let's start from the entrance of the home. Okay. We'll we'll like picture the the home or the apartment or whatever, and we'll start at the entrance. Okay. Your entryway should be well lit at night, Mm -hmm. clear of debris. If your entry has stairs, you should take extra caution. Stairs could be a trip and fall hazard for anyone and are especially dangerous for older adults. The slightest variation in a riser, which is the step's height, or the tread depth, which is how far your foot will go into the step, Mm. can greatly increase fall risks. Now, let me stop right there. If you have really big feet... I thought Mm -hmm. you were stopping. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, sorry. If you have really large feet, then the tread depth... You know, there's a standard tread depth, there is but, a standard tread but depth. it may not work for really large-footed right. people. But you're accustomed to a specific, there are specific standards. Right. So if you're kind of used to the specific standard and then you come across a stair that's not to standard, it may cause you to fall. It, yeah, and, yeah. There have been studies like mm-hmm. the one by Mona Afifi, mm-hmm. Belinda Park, mm-hmm. and Mohammed El Hussein titled... An integrated approach for older adult friendly home staircase design. Mm. We'll have to put a link for that on our website. Which goes into great detail on how stairway design can affect safety. And as this particular research article is often um, incorrectly cited by others online, we will, like you said, include a direct link to it. And it's a, a compendium of specifics for stairways. Because even like a 16th of an inch can cause someone to trip of course i'm saying that but i'm not making a mark on it so i'm not going to remember i have the i have the article here (laughs) okay okay good thank you Mm -hmm. thank you one other thing that i'd like to add though about the steps Mm -hmm. um is it'd be great if you had a handrail because depending again you mentioned like the size of your foot or what have you but if you can securely grab a handrail that's going to help um secure you more right mm-hmm. right um right. so i think there's general, a law at least architecturally for if you have three or more stairs you have to have a hair hand yeah that's a but it, your local laws and codes vary right but it, it does behoove you to have one even with two stairs mm-hmm. even right. with even with two even actually flat walkways in areas that can be icy or snowy right we've got one mm-hmm. right uh so yes Ryan, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> well, um, again, it's just having a handrail is it's a safety precaution. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you don't have to be older, whatever, or you just come over, you know, come off a of surgery or something or whatever. It's just another um, safety feature. That's all. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure that it's strong, secure, and within hand's reach. Right. It yeah, should be point. in the right place. Yep. Yeah. You don't want it down like by your ankles. I was thinking if you have a very <laughs> wide staircase, okay. you want to have a center rail as well. Oh, yes. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Kim could have used that when she fell down the stairs well, at that theater. She fell down the stairs at that theater because they were triangular steps, and those are the most likely to cause trips and falls. Oh, okay. Yeah, spiral did. staircases. Yes, it did. Yeah. And she was trying to make sure that I was safe, which was extremely heartbreaking that, yeah. Well, all right, get back on the script. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, if you happen to live in an area that has cold winter, like we do, mm-hmm. you'll also want to make sure that your entry and walkways are free of ice and snow. Right, right. And also, if you or someone in your household uses a wheelchair, um, you may want to have it professionally, uh, a ramp professionally installed or a lift installed, but make sure that they do it by code. Right, right. Good point. Yes. You don't just ad lib on that because right. you're putting somebody's life in your hands. Whenever possible, forget about sco- throw rugs. Oh, throw mm-hmm. rugs. <laughs> forget about throw rugs. Throw rugs away. Throw those, throw those throw <laughs> rugs away. Throw rugs can uh, be a tripping hazard and they should be avoided. And a throw rug is like a small little area rug. Area, area rug, rug right. right. I call it a throw rug. Everybody calls it something different. We're... we're- Kind of in the same age range. Oh, I so, see. Yeah. So some people call it area runs. <laughs> if you do have a runner at your entrance, make sure that it's secure and it will not shift when you walk in. And keep in mind that the slightest change in the level of flooring underfoot may pose a tripping hazard. On to the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Are we going to go eat? The kitchen, that's sure. a place that I'm not very familiar with. Oh. Uh, I'm getting though. Okay. Uh, but seriously, in the kitchen, what we really mainly want to prevent are cuts and burns and fires and, again, slips and falls. And actually also, I, I guess I should have added poisoning. Oh, good point. Okay. Well, to prevent cuts, make sure that your knives are sharp. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, but... <laughs> Jean was Jean took uh, professional cooking classes at La Cordon Bleu. Yes. And a dull knife may cause you to lose mm. fingers because you're using more force when cutting and the blade may slip rather than cut whatever you're cutting. Mm-hmm. And then it'll slide right into your hand. Also, use the right tool for the job. Don't use a knife as a can <clears throat> opener. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been spying on me? Uh-huh. Uh, Use a can opener to open a can. When using knives or other cutting implements, scissors, robocous, mandolins, use a good cutting technique and form. Another safety tip, don't throw sharp knives or other sharp objects Mm -hmm. into soapy depths of a dishpan or throw axes at a wall. I've seen that. That's that's not on here. No, I know, I know. (laughs) Keep the axes out of the kitchen. (laughs) Actually, can I mention one thing about knives? And this is something. My forks and spoons and butter knives, Mm -hmm. like the butter knives, I'll put Mm -hmm. straight up. When Mm -hmm. I do like a steak You mean like in a dishwasher? Mm -hmm. Well, well, in a dishwasher or after I wash them Mm -hmm. to to dry, Mm -hmm. the butter knives, I'll go straight up. But Mm -hmm. if I'm doing like a steak knife, I put the point down because sometimes you... Put your arm over it, or you scrape mm-hmm. by it, mm-hmm. and again, you're not going to really hurt yourself. Oh with yeah, a I always knife. put right. I okay. always put right. sharp points down. Right, mm-hmm. just like my mother used to say, when you're walking with scissors, point down. Same right. thing. I like to set my knives <laughs> to the side of the sink and wash them one at a time. Okay. Uh, you'll want to store your knives safely, like right, you as were Ron saying. Was saying. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you need to store them, like away from children or elderly that uh, maybe may have Alzheimer's or Mm -hmm. have some type Mm -hmm. of another impairment or anything like that, you may want to store them in a locked drawer or cupboard. To keep our cutting board from sliding around, we like to place a damp towel between the countertop and the cutting board to keep it from shifting when cutting. Also, you may want to swap out your glassware or use silicone sleeves on your glassware to prevent broken glass in the home. Does that... Go yep. around the outside yeah. so that yes. it cracks or breaks. It doesn't shatter all right. over. Yes. They actually make them, too, for insulin bottles. Yeah. Because oh, cool. insulin is so expensive. So they make silicone sleeves for that you can put on your insulin bottles. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and now to help prevent fires, um, keep cooktops, vent hoods, and ovens free of grease. You may hear about restaurant fires. That's often the culprit. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the grease can catch fire. Uh, we actually like and to- don't put paper near your stove. Well, yeah, I thought that was like a given. Well, I'm too- or you draperies. Know, you know. You okay. Know. Okay. Um, we like to toss the metal mesh filters um, for our cooktop vent into soapy water at least once a month because it's amazing how quickly grease can collect on those things. And it, it's well, just... I never thought about that. Oh, yeah. we've um, yeah. When we were in North Carolina renting a house, the first thing I did was, you know, have the whole house cleaned. And I we looked up at the vent and it was caked coated. Yeah. with coated. grease. I mean, you couldn't even, no, it wasn't even usable. Yeah, it's good to check we those We threw out. those yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> we got new, new ones. ones. Yeah. Um, we also have a small kitchen fire extinguisher, mm-hmm. and if you do have um, fire in a pot or pan on the cooktop, you can usually smother the flame with the pot lid mm-hmm. or the pan lid rather than spraying it with a fire extinguisher that could actually spread the fire. Never leave anything cooking unattended. Never. 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 Um, and nowadays, there are actually devices that link your cooktop and your smoke alarm. So when the smoke alarm goes off, the electric or gas to your cooktop or range shuts off automatically. And there are also microwave ovens with preset time limits. Ours will only go up to six minutes. Um, And uh, this way you don't accidentally turn on your microwave for, let's say, 90 minutes instead of 90 seconds like someone we know. (laughs) Um, And when it comes to smoke alarms in the kitchen, you may want to install a model that has a quick remote or Wi-Fi reset. Hmm. It sounds like some of the stuff you're talking about, um, it's art imitating life. Yes. Well, it's anecdotal. We've actually had... Yeah. He's pointing at me. Oh, yeah. We, well, she wasn't the one, but yes. Okay. We've, we've actually, you know, we, we've had house fires um, in our immediate family, and uh, they're they're very scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Jean. Uh, now, let's talk about burns. Um, it's generally best to keep the kitchen clear. Pets, children... And even adults should keep the area around the oven, stove, or cooktop and the path uh, and path to the sink. Keep it clear. You don't want to burn anyone while um, removing a pot of pasta or anything from the cooktop to drain in the sink. And if possible, uh, lock electric cooktops or mm-hmm. secure the knobs for a gas cooktop in households mm-hmm. where only certain members of the family can safely use it on their own. Mm-hmm. I just had an incident where person with Alzheimer's turned the gas on and went back mm-hmm. to bed. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. We yeah. used to take the knobs off. Yeah. And now we just lock our, right. our cooktop. Uh, make sure that you're cooking large volumes of food in small batches. That way it'll be easier to lift and will cool quicker. And if you're storing them for later, uh, which also reduces the risk of food poisoning, mm-hmm. please use pot holders as needed. Okay. Um, practice picking up and moving cold dishes, pots, and pans to get the feel. Oh, that's a good idea. You no. Know? Rather than just sticking your hand on there and saying, oh, that's hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Done that before, oh. unfortunately. Uh, I actually left a metal spoon in a pot. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I learned. Um, Note to self, get run wooden spoons. <laughs> <laughs> this was a while ago, and okay. I've learned my lesson. Okay. But yes, indeed. Okay. Um, and this next one may sound like an odd tip, but here it goes. Okay. The bent lip on a baking rack in the oven is a safety feature and should be at the back of the oven. What that does is it helps to prevent someone from pulling the oven rack all the way out accidentally. When you remove something from the oven, it's best to locate where you intend to place the hot item using pot holders and making sure the area around the oven is clear. Slowly pull out the oven rack, remove the item, and place it on a trivet. Trivet, yep. Heat-proof surface. But you didn't think I knew that word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then slide the rack back in, reaching into the oven to remove the item. I'm sorry. Reaching into the oven to remove items can actually lead to forearms and other burns. I've seen that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you do get a burn, treat it immediately and consult a healthcare professional if needed. Good point. Uh, things can get messy in the kitchen, at least my kitchen. Uh, <laughs> take the time to clean up spills, anything that you dropped on the floor especially. To avoid crush injuries in the kitchen, have your appliances secured with appliance straps to a wall stud. 
Pull down, roll out, or pop up kitchen shelving can help everyone reach needed items without standing on a ladder or bending over. Kitchen faucets with a lever handle and a color, a clear color coded temperature indicator can help you from uh, burning yourself, right? Sure. Setting it to yep. the wrong temperature. Yep. And I think little chef Cade has taught us all that everyone can help in the kitchen. It's a matter of finding the right task for every individual. And it's a it's great to have everyone safely pitch in with meal prep, even if they do occasionally eat all of the butter. On to the bathroom. Okay. Well, I'm sure we've all heard that the bathroom is the most dangerous room of the house. Uh, yep. Well, let's see if we can lower our odds for getting hurt in the bathroom. Okay, since there's water in the bathtub and the shower area, you should check to make sure that these areas have adequate drainage. You want to avoid water pooling and becoming a slip and fall hazard. Have grab bars, safety rails, and poles professionally installed, like we talked about with the railings, Mm -hmm. um, especially where extra stability is needed. And a lot of times this happens with older adults Mm -hmm. or people with disabilities, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, Have them professionally installed. A sink basin, a towel rack, a shower door handle, or toilet paper holder is not a substitute for a grab bar. The grab bars need to be properly mounted and be able to bear one's weight. A shower chair or a seat can be helpful in improved bath time safety when used properly. Uh, You may want to have a seat both in the shower and one just outside the shower. This way, you can wash and dry yourself while still being seated. If you Care for someone who needs help bathing. You need to stay with them. Never leave an infant, a young child, or anyone who requires assistance while bathing. Do not leave them alone in the bath. Back and foot scrubbers, a handheld long hose, shower head, a shower caddy to keep items within reach, a handheld long hose shower head. Sorry. A- Apparently, that's very important. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot to mention a tub spout cushion. Temperature gauges keep bath water between 98 and 100 degrees, Fahrenheit that is. And other bath tools can also be helpful and potentially improve bath safety. They can help reach hard to reach spots as well. Another thing, make sure that the bath tubs and showers have a non-slip surface. Uh, that's, I think, probably huge mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. out there. There are a number of products in the market that can improve traction and reduce the risk of falls in the bath or shower. And based on what I've read, I'd like to make a controversial suggestion. Please skip the water toys. In addition to potentially harboring bacteria, mold, viruses, fungus, etc., etc., bath toys can also be a tripping hazard for people. Sure. As with elsewhere in the home, the bathroom should be well lit. Floor should be kept dry and clear of clutter or debris and anything that's potentially dangerous, like cleaning chemicals. Okay. Keep them out of sight of children, out of sight of everybody, so that, you know, you use them when you need them, but they're not there cluttering up the place. Um, any outlets, they should be GFCI or linked to a GFCI outlet. Toilet safety frames with grab bars and raised seats or overall toilet heights may be good for some. When bearing down on the toilet, some people may get dizzy or even pass out. And if this is a concern, you may want to talk about improved safety when toileting with your health care provider. Also, maintaining proper ventilation in the bathroom also plays an important role in safety because moisture can facilitate mold and mildew growth. And that can be slippery. And gross. And gross is right. Uh, Use a contrasting color. That can also help so that, you know, people can see where there's changes. Mm -hmm. Um, Bright contrasting colors can also improve bathroom safety for those with visual impairments or dementia. Rinse the shower pan and bathtub every time after bathing. That can help reduce soap residue and biofilm buildup, which, again, can be slippery and dangerous. And gross. (laughs) Skip the bath oils and other products that can make the flooring slick. Um, And if financially feasible and recommended by a health or safety advisor, you may want to think about installing a walk-in bathtub or shower uh, with little, if any, threshold. Um, 
yeah, it, that'd be great if you can. Mm -hmm. And finally, you may want to remove sliding doors for bathtubs and showers. The uh, the raised lip, the the track where the um, doors slide back and mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. um, the raised lip on the tub or the shower pan may pose a tripping hazard for people. And on a more general note, um, there are many steps you can take to prevent household fires and improve your chances of surviving a household fire. Um, every home should have a working smoke detector, ideally hardwired with a battery backup. And if not, uh, or anyways, yeah, replace the battery twice a year and store 9-volt batteries in a separate container. 9-volt batteries stored in a junk drawer may actually um, ignite and cause Whoa, a fire. I never heard that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. No 9 volts in the junk drawer. Um, test detectors on a regular mm -hmm. basis. We like to test them twice a year. And, and occasionally we have a chihuahua barking in the background. I'm very sorry about that. And make sure you have correctly placed in, ad in an adequate number of detectors. Um, there's Generally, it's on the ceiling or on the wall, but make sure you check with your local code. Um, and you want to have the adequate number for the size of your home. If you are unaware as to where to place the detectors or how many detectors you should have, contact your local fire department. Um, and we've heard this many, many, many times before, um, especially from our you know friends in the fire department. If at all possible, skip the candles. They're um, an unneeded hazard. And keep pathways and stairways clear at all times. If a fire breaks out, you'll want to be able to exit your home quickly and safely. Mm -hmm. And if you or a family member um, sleeps above or below the first floor or ground level, make sure that they have a means of egress mm -hmm. and a safe means by which to get to the ground level and practice that as well. Um, bedrooms should have a window which is large enough for a firefighter wearing full gear to climb through. And you can check with your local fire department and building code for actual um, de details as to what those measurements are. They might say that there's a standardized height and width that you have to meet, but it's not always the case that that's, if you have one with the standard height and the standard width, that that's large enough. I don't know if that makes sense, but check with them. And make sure everyone in your household knows how and when to use a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers should be properly located and inspected yearly and primarily at exit doors. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to actually walk back into a fire to grab a fire extinguisher. And you can contact your local fire department to learn if they offer fire extinguisher training um, as well as fire prevention classes and additional fire safety and prevention tips. Um, if you've never used a fire extinguisher, it can be intimidating the first time you use it. So it's nice to actually know what that feels like. Um, make sure your electrical wiring, wiring is up to code as well. If possible, upgrade to ground fault circuit interrupters and arc fault circuit interrupter outlets. As uh, Ron was talking about, they're very important. Um, we, and that might help uh, prevent electrical fires. Um, also, try not to overload your circuits and keep transformers, which are the little black boxes you'll see on a power cord for things like your laptop, printer, and other devices. Those should be kept cool. And the laptop should be kept cool. And the laptop should be kept cool. And <laughs> That's now, how Kim's fire started. It was a transformer. Oh. That was Transformers used to be in the laptop oh. and in the printer okay. underneath. So okay. they didn't have enough ventilation right, sorry. to stay cool. Take it back. No, I would still say keep your laptop cool. And don't leave it on a bedspread or a blanket right, right. or a sofa right. that doesn't allow for proper ventilation. A lot of kids do that. I know. It's right. dangerous. Oh. Yeah. Um, and um, never cover up that transformer box that needs to breathe. Well, it doesn't. Pretend act. it needs to breathe. <laughs> okay. I was going to say it doesn't physically breathe. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Um, once the electronics start breathing, we're all in trouble. <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay. Um, here's one more fire prevention tip. Register all new electronic devices. So if there's ever a recall, you will hopefully be notified. And if you per are purchasing um, used electronic devices, check online and see if there has been a recall. Okay. Let me let me add one more thing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're talking about the fires and, and all of this. I think mm -hmm. one key thing, too, is for the family to mm -hmm. have a fire evacuation sure. plan. Oh, so right. make sure Gosh. that Absolutely. everybody knows gets where, out of the house. Right. Absolutely. And knows where to meet. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. actually, we... Um, we have trained our. We, there was we had an unfortunate family incident where someone's pets did not make it out, but luckily all the but people did. But you can't did. train a cat. I don't know if you can train a cat, but you we've... can't train a cat to come to okay. eat. Okay. Oh okay. well, yeah, maybe okay. to eat. Well, we've trained our dogs, and if they hear um, a, a smoke alarm go off, 
be it in our house or on TV, <laughs> they will immediately go to, to the, the door. door. Gotcha. So then we open the door and then we right. let them out. And we practice that as well. Right. And, and that's the thing, not only to have one, but to mm-hmm. practice it. Right. Yeah. And also yeah. there's important things like being crawling out, you know, right. crawling, touching doors with the back of your hand, not the front of your right. hand. Right. Things of that nature um, you want to practice. And often fire departments will have a practice mm-hmm. um, set up that you can walk through. Right. I know that Kim through. mentioned when her basement would caught fire mm-hmm. that she felt the heat on her feet, on her feet yes. as she oh, was wow. walking across the kitchen right. floor. Right. Wow. And that's another example basement. of smoke detectors. There was one working smoke detector. The rest were still in the package waiting to be installed because she had just moved in. Gotcha. Okay. Was this in the new house? No, no. this oh. was no this years, was, ago, years ago when, okay. when yeah, the yeah. kids were were and the kids were little. Gotcha. So on to the laundry room. On to the laundry room. I was kind of digging what we were just talking about, but yes, let's go on to the laundry room. <laughs> Well, as with other areas in the home where water and electricity may come together, make sure your outlet in the laundry room are also the GFCI. And uh, the the fancy name escapes me right now, but I don't... Ground ground fault um, circuit interrupter. That one. Check your lint trap and dryer exhaust system vent on a regular basis. Um, And here's a tip, too, because a lot of times people will pull out the lint trap Mm -hmm. and get the lint out of there. Mm -hmm. But it's very narrow, and it's it hard to somewhere, get. It might be somewhere in the pipe, right? Yes. In well, the yeah, for the, right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't have the tool, try to get one or mm-hmm. get with somebody who can come. Because the, cleaning the lint trap is very important, but there's still stuff that gathers underneath that. Right. And that can also. And cause... birds make Wait, nests okay, on the outside. Okay, you guys would read the script. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you can... <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a second. I and, didn't talk about birds. Yeah. Um, okay. But also, there are professional services that will right. come out and thoroughly clean it, and you could have that done twice a year. Oh, I see. Read the script. Oh, yeah, right here. I've actually <laughs> seen birds nesting in a dryer vent on the side of someone's house. It wasn't mine, but I saw it. It was Kim's. Kim has a lot of problems with stuff. Like well, also that. in North Carolina. Oh, and, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And what we first noticed was that um, our clothes weren't getting dry. And we were like, why aren't they getting dry? And then we looked on the outside of the house, and there was actually lint just falling out of the exterior vent. And then we looked across the street, and there you had a huge bird nest in theirs. So um, I I know we're kind of making a little light of this, but, I mean, in all seriousness, um, we want everybody to be aware of this. And also, just like all the other rooms, please keep the laundry floor areas dry and clear of debris, so that people don't fall. And on to the bedroom. Okay. As with all the other rooms in the bed in the home, but the bedroom floor should be free of clear and debri- of uh, clutter and debris. A night light, under bed light, or under nightstand lighting or lights with motion sensors can make walking to the bathroom or other areas safer at night. Um, dressers, nightstands, bookcases, televisions, etc., should be anchored to a stud in the wall, and cords from window coverings should always be secured and out of the reach of children. Um, keep toys and other items within reach or locked away. Um, You don't want to have them up on a high shelf where somebody's going to be reaching for them. Beds, bed frames, and mattresses and box springs all come in a dizzying array of options. If you've ever walked into a mattress store, it's amazing. When sitting on the edge of the bed, your feet should be uh, able to be squarely or squarely placed them on the floor and your um, your late your quads should your calves or not your calves I don't know what I'm saying your thighs your thighs thank you should be <laughs> 90 degrees so it, that bed that I got rid of that I right. had to take a running leap to get in that, that was, was always too funny. tall yeah but it was funny to watch so didn't you have a little little like no, trampoline I, no I just kind of ran and jumped up yeah. okay so okay. and yeah so if a bed is too high or too low it may pose a greater risk of falls foam bumpers concave mattresses and similar devices may be recommended for individuals who roll out or fall out of bed check with your healthcare provider to find the safest option for you or your household or members of your household and um, for those who need to make frequent trips to the bathroom a portable commode uh, may be the best option if you place that in the bedroom um, so they don't have to walk as far. Right. And um, there are other safety concerns, but we're going to kind of gloss over this. Um, okay. Well, we could go on and on. Uh, right. Yeah. And although we can go on and on about household safety, I think we should call it a day. Um, make it's sure a that day. If you, any chemicals <laughs> are kept out of the reach of those who may ingest them, because poisoning is another... Um, well, no, we talked about poisoning already. I know, but I just want to say that that's All another right. important thing All to right. talk about. All right, I want to thank everybody for listening, and I hope to God they're still listening. Well, we kind of ran over the mill there. But again, all, all kidding aside, I think, you know, we wanted to get 
pretty mm-hmm. uh, in depth about this because it is very serious. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, thank you to everybody for listening. If you have a question or comment related to today's show, please contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. As always, please keep in mind this, that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment or before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional me- medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard in this podcast. Oh my God, well next week. Oh, no, 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 no.